tough. <laughs> Our boy actually had a pretty decent game, DeAndre, and at least. Did you did team you team see team. how he was scoring though? Like I don't want to keep getting on his case, but it's just like it's always like these floaters and push shots. I know it's, it's like there's not even anybody <laughs> in front of you go like dunk the ball, lay like get to the rim. Everything feels so uh and uh like that's why I say he's so soft. Everything is I it's nice to have a little touch as a big man, but it's like at some point, I need you to be a big man and go to the basket and try to dunk the basketball or at least be aggressive. He's All of his pulling points... it out when he doesn't need to. It's like right. there's no one in front of you and you're still hitting like a little touch shot. Like <laughs> just take one step and dunk it or just give me a little finger roll or something. It's, everything does not need to be so much finesse. Did you see the uh, – somebody basically I, – I remember it was a video. Dude was talking about how coming out of Arizona – he said he didn't want to be a center. Like, he was a power forward on purpose. Kind of like how AD was, you know, he does no. But honestly, when I think about it, him and AD are the same person. AD is just way better. <laughs> <laughs> they have the same mindset sometimes. But they say he um he didn't want to be a center. Like, he prefers to play the power forward. Like, he doesn't like banging down low. Like, his preferred position is power forward. But yeah. In today's NBA, that's not happening. Like, you're not You can't have to. You don't no. shoot. It can't happen. Yeah, you're not versatile enough, bro. It's, it's not gonna happen unless you got the flamethrower in your back pocket. You've been waiting to to let it go, but who knows? You're not gonna play. You see what happens when you put you put two seven footers together and one of them can shoot. It didn't look good in Minnesota. So right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. I I don't think that's gonna that's gonna change anything. I think the Suns are a team that they want a center like Nicholas Claxton or Jared Allen or. Like a Zubac, somebody, right, Looney, somebody that'll just get rebounds, you know, be an interior presence on both sides of the ball. And that's it, the roll. They don't want somebody that's going to need post touches and face ups. Like, that's not how their offense is predicated, which is why right. I was confused as to why they re signed him. Like, after everything that had transpired previously, like they had this super embarrassing elimination to Dallas last year. Aiton had issues in that series on the court and then off the court with Monty, clearly. Um, and then, like, the Pacers looked to sign him and they matched the offer sheet when they could have just signed him the year prior than that. It so makes like, no sense. Just creating unnecessary drama, and it, it just seems like he doesn't fit what this roster not necessarily needs, but how they want to play basketball under Monty Williams. Aiton doesn't seem like the fit there. Mm-hmm. So if, I, I it's it's puzzling. I I really don't get it. If they end up losing this series, it's gonna be an interesting conversation at, on the next pod as to what they do moving forward as far as like trying to build a real roster with this team. Because right now they they're kind they of tied. Real, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it's tough because they need real role players. Like this this whole Katie and Booker's gonna carry us every night. Ah, uh, this isn't really sustainable. I don't see it working. It might win you some regular season games, but comes down to the postseason and teams play you every other night and they're preparing for you every single night. I don't, I don't see a world where they can go on a deep playoff run playing like this. Yeah, uh, I, I cannot imagine D Book having better games than he had in Game Two and Game Three, and that's not sustainable. And if you're All saying right. that, you're like, this is the roster that you're going to roll with. Like, where do y'all go from here to get better? And Chris Paul is getting older and older and just that more. That contract injuries. is getting bigger and bigger also. Right. Which there is, is what, like, when he got signed to that deal, like, that's what everybody knew it was. Like, if he declines in age, then it's like, okay, the first two years of this deal are going to be, it's still a lot of money, but it's Chris Paul. And, like, that's our window because if that decline kicks in, which – you know, unfortunately, it feels like it inevitably has for Chris Paul as it has his whole career. Like he cannot stay healthy in the postseason. Um, then it's like you're spending all this money on your point guard, older, can't play, slower pace. You're now locked into a huge deal with Kevin Durant. You've traded away a lot of draft capital to get him, traded away your depth to get him. So barring retooling around vets like again this team is really tied Aiton is now on a max type of contract a big deal so I, I i don't know what what they can do other than just be like i don't know d book i need 15 more i don't know kd i need 15 more like that's 
all that you have right really for this this roster so 